Jude's one of the most fascinating people I've ever met. He just has this ability to make you love what he loves. Snakes, he loves snakes. His fascination with things is unbelievably contagious. Being a dad really uh, broadens your world because they find beauty in things that I would just pass right by. He sees the world in a different way. I remember having this really weird thought when my son was born that it's like okay for me to die now. It's like having your own heart in a different body. Hold them, but their like, heads are sticking out. Like watching your heart run around. Like I talk to it. I don't know, I felt like it meant that part of who I am, you know, is gonna continue. So where are mom and daddy going today? To Paris. Why are we going to Paris? Because there's just a lot of people, like cars and people putting plastic and fires and making this thing called carbon, like carbon dioxide, and that's making, and it's going to up into the ice atmosphere, and it's, and it's making it very hot, and it's very dangerous for a lot of people and animals. Do you love animals? Yes. Do you love you love nature in general? Yeah. So you love the world? Yeah. Why do you why do you think you love the world? Because it's God's creation. Yeah. One hundred fifty heads of state, the largest gathering of presidents and prime ministers in history, arrived in Paris this week to kick off the COP21 climate change conference, which is being ambitiously billed as possibly humanity's last chance to create a global framework to prevent the catastrophic effects of climate change. I guess what's interesting to me about climate change, and I think what sort of one of my big questions is why is it such a uh, controversial issue? You know, like, so I, you know, the other, uh, the other night I put up a little something on, you know, the socials about, you know, being here. And I literally, my, I, I said, I want to learn about how climate change is affecting the poor. Mm -hmm. I didn't say... I don't want to, you know, I didn't say I'm going to go tie myself to a tree <laughs> or I didn't say anything, you know what I'm saying? I was very specific. Learn how climate change is affecting the poor. Mm -hmm. I feel like no matter where you stand, learning about how something is affecting the poor is mm -hmm. an appropriate thing to yeah. do for someone who has yeah. time and, and wants to care about people other than themselves, you know. But I got such n some very negative comments. <laughs> I yeah. thought, where is this negativity coming from? That's something I kind of want to think about and I want to yeah. dive into and get my mind around. If I look at creation and I look at life as God's art, if I look at it as yeah. like this thing that he made, that, you know, it's got his fingerprints on, in, the, in the clay of the earth, you know, it's like if that's his art and I worship him and have a sense of reverence for what he's made, um, then I want to learn what my part is you know, the little bit of influence that we have, yeah. I want to use that, you know, in a small way to, because I honestly think most people that love God, if they could see it for what it really is, it's like, why, w why wouldn't they want to continue, you know, to really take care of what He has made? Says.
driven by kings You cover the mountains, the valleys below In the red of your mighty wings Those comments, I, I, when I hear them, or when I listen to people that have those comments, I think something is so fear-based. It's mm -hmm. based yeah. on... Or, or it's a misunderstanding of our role in creation. Like yeah. They're like, well, God would never allow the planet to ever get that bad, so right. why are you even focusing on that? <laughs> right. And I'm going, no, I think we have responsibility and we have to steward what was given to us. Yeah. I think that's very biblical. Yeah, I don't think it's, I think we've supernaturalized things and sometimes not in a great way, right. where we made it be like, like God's like gonna wave this magic wand and just fix yeah. all our problems, you know? Right. I, I don't know that anybody really cares what I have to say about the next life until they see yeah. what I think yeah. and what I care about this life, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. My country is being tested by this hailstorm called Super Typhoon Haiyan. We remain uncertain as to the full extent of the damage and devastation as information trickles in agonizingly slow manner because power lines and communication lines have been cut off and may take a while before they are restored. Then I struggle to find words to describe how I feel about the losses. Up to this hour, I agonize, waiting for word to the fate of my very own relatives. I speak for my delegation, but I, I speak, speak for the countless people who will no longer be able to speak for themselves after perishing from the storm. How does a person become mindful? How does a person become more aware? I mean, I, I, think, I think one word that can describe is uh, respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, the, the, the reason why I'm so enthusiastic about the issue of climate change is solidarity is our only option, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Climate change is that defining issue of our generation that forces all of us to stand in solidarity and to respect each other in a way we have not done ever. I think for me, one of the things that sticks out the most is this idea that um, climate issues are a human rights issue now, mm -hmm. not, um, not a human rights issue in 50 years or 100 years, but they very much seem to be a human rights issue right now and I really didn't realize that yeah. you know I didn't understand that and um, and so that's very eye-opening to me yeah I mean the world it seems like the world is calling for help they're mm -hmm. calling for people to mm -hmm. step up mm -hmm. especially I mean America yeah. you know I've come here personally as the leader of the world's largest economy and the second largest emitter to say that the United States of America not only recognizes our role in creating this problem, we embrace our responsibility to do something about it. And what should give us hope? That this is a turning point. That this is the moment we finally determined we would save our planet. No nation, large or small, wealthy or poor, is immune to what this means. 
14 of the 15 warmest years on record have occurred since the year 2000. And 2015 is on pace to be the warmest year of all. That future is one that we have the power to change. Right here. Right now. In your work as, as president of Ireland and um, not with the UN and all that you've done, you've dealt with you know issues of violence and poverty, women inequality. Why have you given your you know why why are you giving your life to climate change? Uh, I think that uh, the foreign minister of this country, Laurent Fabius, has put it very well in brilliant French, which I won't attempt. But he says, and he's right. He says we're the first generation to fully understand the dangers of climate change and the last generation with time to do something about it. That's frightening, the last generation with time to do something about it. So, you know, I have five grandchildren and they will be in their 40s in 2050. They will share the world with about nine billion others, we know that. What kind of world? If we are having more floods, more droughts, um, the rainy seasons don't come and people can't feed themselves, and they're moving to try and feed them. What, what kind of world will they inherit? Do you see a particular tension between science and religion that's been difficult to sort of supersede some of the ambiguity? Maybe I don't see how I can answer this as a scientist. I'll answer it as a person who happens to be a scientist. I don't see any, any reason why there should be a contradiction between science and religion. So for, if anything, whenever I uh, go to church, I don't go every Sunday, but when I do go to church and hear my, really my friends, uh, I have friends who are pastors, talk about their take on climate and nature and climate change, it just inspires me as a scientist. It makes me want to work uh, even harder. So there's, there's people, there's scientists that are difficult to get along with. There's people that are very religious or difficult to get along with, and we'll just have to accept that, right? I personally, to share this with you, I find the whole idea of the climate, cha of the climate system changing to be really a tough thing to accept because there's, there's nothing more all-encompassing in our lives as the weather. To think of something as basic as weather and climate changing and that we're the bad guys, who wants to believe it? But, I mean, the only thing worse than believing it is not believing it. We're gonna have to bend the curve in global emissions. We're gonna have to stop the increase sometime within the next 10 years. And we're gonna have to bring down global emissions by about 50% by the middle of the century. We've gotta make a long-term commitment for the sake of our kids and our grandkids and their kids. Here's a thought that I had, though. Um, you know, when I first came into this, one of my biggest hang-ups is, like, um, the fact that in America, we're, you know, this issue is played out in the political realm, and it's so polarized between right, right you know. But um, I was just thinking about the irony of this um, earlier today, that, you know, in those terms, it seems like the more liberal side of the world uh, in, in our country it has sort of championed this cause, but when I, when I think about what an environmental stewardship is, yeah. it's conservative. Yeah, very conservation. It, it's it's conservation. conservation. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's the same word. Right, it's, it's to conserve. Yeah, to conserve. It's conserving, and, yeah. and, and uh, so I just found that really ironic. It shows that those boxes yeah. don't actually <laughs> fit really for anyone because we're all a bit liberal and conservative in the way that we right. do certain things, yeah. you know? And so yeah. those polarizing boxes don't yeah. fit. Yeah. And both liberals and conservatives are both greedy. Yeah. And we, and we both have to deal with um, whatever yeah. situation we've created yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. You know, and so in that way, like, it can't be um, a liberal or a conservative yeah, issue because it affects both of us right. literally the same. The message of the gospel was good news to the poor, it was good news to everyone to say, hey, repent, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Yeah. Yeah. So whether you are intentional or unintentional, right. you're implicit in this. Yeah. You're, you're all mm -hmm. guilty. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. There's mercy for you. Yeah. For those that knew it and doing it intentionally and those yeah. that didn't know yeah. and were ignorant to the fact, like there's still 
mercy available. And I think when it comes to this, I think it's the same thing. Like, I think the other thing there is when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he means now. Yeah. Meaning heaven is now. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we're going to endure this earth until it's done and then we well, have no. heaven, but it's that we have heaven and earth at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, if there's a, you know, a silver lining or if there's something beautiful in this situation, it's that we are all being required to acknowledge that one another are here. We're all being required to acknowledge that we exist together. So we don't really have a choice. My value system tells me that as a Christian, we were taught to be stewards of, uh, of creation. And uh, we look all around, we have not done a good job with that role. And uh, I cry, I grieve, because that was such a simple responsibility for us. We have not done it. And so part of where I come from is a deep sense of remorse, a deep sense of my desire to seek forgiveness from future generations and, and directly from my children. This process has been called a farce. It has been called an annual carbon intensive gathering of useless frequent flyers. It has also been called saving tomorrow today. We can fix this. We can stop this madness. Well, my, my call is, let's go back to what I have referred to, the, the creation. Uh, God created this beautiful earth. And after He created this beautiful earth, He entrusted it to, his, to the people, or uh, to the men and women whom He created in His own image. And part of our Imago Dei is to take care, to be stewards of this creation. So this is God's world. This is my father's world. And therefore, we have to take care of this world that God has entrusted to us. All I want from you four is that you use your talent mm -hmm. for a good purpose yes. Yes. in helping us to address climate. Yes. Yes. Just yes. that. Yes. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. It's a real honor to meet you. It is. Yes. yes. The reality is that this issue is much too important to be left to politicians and to the United Nations. It's an issue for all of us, and it's an issue where we need more and more momentum. It's now an issue for faith-based organizations under very good leadership from Pope Francis and indeed the Church of England, which is divesting from fossil fuels. It's an issue for the, for the business uh, community and the good news is that the business community is changing very rapidly except for the fossil fuel industries um, <laughs> it's an issue for the women's movement it's an issue for young people it is the greatest challenge to humanity and justice in our world we have to reach a new level of consciousness a higher moral ground and we have to do it this year. And that won't happen unless we have the momentum from people around the world who say, we want action now, we want to change course, we want a safe world, a safe world for future generations, a safe world for our children and our grandchildren. And we're all in this together. I'm here because of my son. Mm -hmm. That's literally the only reason I've made it here. He loves this world so much. You know, I've started to fall in love with the things he's in love with. 
He inspired hope in me and he's given me a vision and he's enabled me to see how beautiful, you know, the things are that he loves. I want to make sure that the things that he loves are going to be there.